Haptic effects are perhaps one of the most overlooked features by most players, yet it's perhaps one of the most important features in actually making a player feel as though they belong within a virtual world. Try playing some of your favorite VR games without any use of haptic effects. It feels drastically different. Slicing blocks in Beat Saber without actually feeling as though you're slicing those blocks. Or shooting enemies in games like Pavlov without actually feeling your gun fire off. It doesn't really feel as though you belong. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can add haptic feedback to your own VR game so players actually feel as though they belong within your virtual world. But before we go ahead and jump to that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, consider checking out my Patreon in the description below. You don't have to donate if you don't want to, but it's a great way to help support VR Playground. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so haptic effects are a little bit weird to show on camera since it's something I'm feeling. So I'm gonna hold it a little close to the mic. Um, hopefully it's not too loud. I'm going to try and qu quiet it in editing if it is. <laughs> um, anyways, so I have two different types of haptic effects. Well, they're not necessarily effects. This one's actually technically an effect. This one is just a straight up haptic. Um, I'll show you what I mean here as we're looking at both of these. So with my left one, let me go and hit that a couple times. So hopefully you could kind of hear that that one's really quick. No matter what I do, it plays for the same duration. It plays for the same intensity. It's the exact same every time. And this is probably something that you've more commonly seen. Uh, say for example, if you fire off a gun in a, uh, in a VR world, that's something, even if you're firing multiple bullets, like it's an automatic weapon, um, you're probably only going to play this haptic effect even if it's several times in a row, because eventually it's going to end and you want it to be about the same for each bullet. Um, or say, for example, if you open up a drawer and you want for when that drawer opens fully to for just the player to know, that's something that you may want to use a lot quicker than, um, than what goes on with my right hand. So let me go and show you with my right hand. So hopefully with the right hand you could kind of see the difference. The right hand <clears throat> compared to the left hand will actually continue that firing the haptic effect for as long as I'm holding down this right trigger. So I could, if I wanted to, I could have this playing forever and it would make no difference. Now the there this probably isn't something you're going to as commonly use. This is probably something for like if a player sticks their hand in a wall and you want them to be aware that their hand is still in the wall that's something that might be useful there. Um, other than that, there's not an awful lot of uses for something like this, unless you want to do something different, because this is a different setup than what I'm doing with my left hand. The left hand's actually, you can plot it out in a line graph and you can make a more gradual or a quicker sort of um, haptic effect a lot quicker, a lot easier, just by modifying it in the editor. This one, it's not quite as visual of an editor, it's just a simple, what's the intensity, what's the frequency, and that's about it. So let me go and jump into the tutorial and we can go ahead and have a look at how this functions. Let's go ahead and start off with the first method of actually creating a haptic feedback effect. To do this, go ahead and start by opening up your content browser and in here, create a new folder called haptics. Once you have this folder open, go ahead and right click in the content browser and in here under miscellaneous, you should see three options. Haptic feedback buffer, haptic feedback curve, and haptic feedback sound wave. Any three of these can actually be used in order to actually create the first method that we're going to use for haptic feedback effects. However, I personally prefer using a haptic feedback curve. Once you have your haptic feedback effect open, you should see two options here, two line graphs that we can possibly use amplitude and frequency. Now you can honestly play around with either of these, but at the bare minimum, you want to make sure that amplitude is set. Amplitude is at the very least necessary in order to make sure that feedback effect works. So to do this, I'm going to simply add in three keys by right clicking on the line graph. Now, as you can see, the lines between our keys are completely straight, meaning that this is going to be a very quick and brief haptic effect. But if you want, you can actually take this a step further. If you right click on any of the keys, you'll actually get a number of options that will allow for you to modify the line graph. You could, for example, curve this line graph 
So rather than going straight from zero to one, and there's a very gradual increase from zero to one and then back from one to zero. So I'm just going to make a few quick modifications here. You obviously don't have to. Once you've completed making this haptic feedback effect, we can now go into our VR pawn. So go ahead and return back to the content browser and open that up. Once in your VR pawn, your haptic effect is probably usually going to play along some other type of action. For example, when you stick your hand in a wall or some sort of grabbable object, or if you want to have some sort of interaction between something that the player's holding, say, say for example, a gun or a saber or something of that nature. However, for this tutorial, we're going to keep things quite simple and I'm just going to tie this to trigger presses for each of my controllers. We'll start with the trigger left. The trigger left is going to use the haptic effect that we just created in the content browser. So to do this, go ahead and get your player controller. Then using our player controller, you want to play haptic effect. In this play haptic effect node, you need to do a couple things. First, you need to set whatever haptic effect that you want to run. After you've selected your haptic feedback, you have three different options below this. All, a couple of these are optional, but I'm going to run through them all real quick. The first one is going to determine which hand we actually want to run this haptic effect. Obviously this one's our trigger left, so I'm just going to leave this to our left hand. After this, you also have scale, which can range anywhere from zero to one. This will add an additional modifier to the haptic effect if you don't want it to run at full intensity, but somewhere else you may want to run this same haptic effect at full intensity instead. The final option is looping. Now I'm obviously going to leave this to false since in most cases you're probably not going to end up looping your haptic effect. But in case you ever want to, then there is an option here for you. With that, our haptic effect is all set up and that is our left hand all complete. Now let's go ahead and jump onto the right hand. Now our right hand is in a sense, a little bit of a simpler method of actually implementing a haptic effect. And this can actually be used to replace the haptic effect if we so chose. To do this, again, we're going to want to grab our player controller. Then once we have our player controller, we want to set haptics by value. The set haptics by value is a completely simplified version of what we did on our left hand, but this can still be useful in a lot of other scenarios if you want a longer term haptic effect. Here you simply set whatever amplitude and frequency you want your haptic effect to run at, and then you choose whichever hand that you want to actually run this haptic effect. So for this, I'm of course again going to go ahead and just set our haptic effect to a solid 1.0, just as we did in the haptic effect asset. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch our hand to the right hand. So that way it corresponds a little bit more correctly. And we're actually able to test each of these haptic effects on different hands. And that's our haptic effect all set up. It's really that simple and that quick and easy to do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.